watching Master Trader Live, simple market analysis and education to help you make money in the markets. Join us live each week on YouTube and see past episodes at Master Trader Live. And now your show hosts, Greg Capra and Dan Gibby. Welcome, everybody. We got another great one today. We're going to be talking about climactic reversal patterns, retests and reversals. What's that? Well, have you ever been in a trade that went against you and you didn't take your stop? And eventually you got out of that trade and it turned around? You can associate that with a climactic pattern. Things go down and down, and eventually they reach a climactic pitch where either those that are buying or shorting or those that are on the wrong side of the trade throw in the towel, and there are specific patterns that display what other people are doing, what they're thinking, what they're experiencing. And that is really the key to understanding charts, to associate price patterns, what others' expectations, how they feel, what they're doing, and so on. It just was a big aha moment for me. Um, and was I on one of those trades a few times where I sold and it was climactic, where I was so convinced that it was going lower? A hundred percent. And by reviewing those trades, those losers... And how the hell did it start going up when I was so darn convinced it was probably going to zero? And eventually it began to turn around. And so that's what Dan and I are going to share with you today, as we always do each Wednesday. Um, one concept and how we define it, utilize it, and profit from it. Awesome. We almost matched today, Dan. Yeah. With our colors. Yeah, you match your background. I match my beautiful Broward County water. All right, all right, let's go. So, you know, we're pattern traders. Um, we start with one of these pictures. We ha obviously have others, as I, I mentioned up here in the heading. These are all bullish patterns. Then we we take that picture and we just overlay these other concepts. Where where is this picture in the trend on the time frame that you're trading? Is it on support and resistance? What are, is it showing relative strength weakness? What are the broader markets doing? And then just position and money management and trader psychology. That's all we do. We're we're looking at pictures and we're trading stocks and options on these and exchange. This is our inventory. If you worked at Nordstrom, your inventory is, is floating. This is our inventory, pictures of stocks, of commodities, of ETFs, futures, and that's what we trade. Um, we believe in technical analysis because it reflects the sum total of all supply and demand who's in control on that time frame, and, and we're trading with the, the person in charge. So climactic and W retest. We have a very specific definition of a of a W bottom. We'll get into that. And and then, you know, if it's not a technical W bottom, we just say, hey, it's a bullish, it's retesting it. We'll get into that. But there's not a climactic um, buy setup picture on this slide. Why? Well, because we didn't draw it like that, but we have other trades and we limited them to nine. Um, but if I would have to start up here, this is a buy setup. It's a retracement and reversal on support and an uptrend. Now, these climactics are, as you're going to see, it's just many, 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 many fluid red bars in a row. And then we're going to trade them as a, as a counter trend um, little bounce. But we'll get into that. So Dan, one of the things that I would add, since we always show this slide in every MT Live, is that all of, all of these patterns, whether we're talking about climactics or many things that Dan that we talk about on a weekly basis, any of these could form with any any of those strategies. So while we're talking about climactics today, there are some others that maybe are more 
reliable for calling the turn and others, but you know, wh whether it's the one in the middle there that says, call it what you want, it's going to go up. That could happen near the end of a climactic move. The red bar ignored, you know, it began to move. Well, it was preceded by red bars, but that turn began to happen. So any, any of these, even the breakdown failure could happen. And we have and a so slide. The <laughs> yeah. The takeaway from that is I think most of us, when we're starting out, we learn a pattern or two and we get hung up on it and we think things have to happen that way. And they really don't. In other words, you really can't predict what's going to happen. And a lot of people or, you know, patterns, whatever, suggest that you can, you can't. And that, that's just a trap. So you have to be open. So if you know, you know, different scenarios, it's like, okay, I know what that one means. And so we'll, we'll continue and show you that. Hey, Deepak. So, you know, just a little bit of the psychology. And and when we switch over to real charts, uh, Greg, let's look at some of the of the of the new ones. I I call them toys. They're meme stocks. They're just crazy. We have, you know, the 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 Trump meme stock came out yesterday, and that's the news is talking about their crazy fundamentals relative to uh, to what the stock's doing. Um, but, you know, this was a great book, the Tulip Mania back in Europe in the in the 1600s, people just paying insane prices for tulip bulbs. And the same thing happens in, in the stock market over and over again. You, you can have you can have one stock just on its own uh, crazy mania like this. You could have an entire sector which often happens when you have a new sector, like the internet days, look how many bubbles were created back then with no fundamentals to, to back those valuations up. Um, but, you know, we don't care about the reason. And you, we're gonna show you our specific technical approach for fading these manias and fading fear on a climactic buy setup intelligently you can't just say well this tulip's not worth that so i'm i'm going to short all the way up because the you know what's that saying uh, they can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent and and that's why we're technical based patterns so i, I came up with this list signs of giving extended climactic objective criteria now you know, Greg and I can look at the daily and weekly and say, yeah, that's climactic. It's getting ahead of itself. And then we're going to spend a lot of time today saying, okay, it is climactic. Now, when do I hit the button to fade it? All right. So that, that's a different question, which we're going to spend a lot of time on. Uh, so they, these are just objective criteria. And, you know, we, we combine them all and we do it visually, but we start slow and and here you go. How many consecutive up bars do I have? What's the percentage rise in a short amount of time? Here, just eyeball this monthly chart. Just eyeball it. It went from 100 to 500. That's simple math. Distance from major moving averages and the moving averages expanding from each other. So th this got climactic, you know, this 20 got far here. Uh, you can see this getting farthest away from the 20, the 20 getting farther from the 50. So that's a visual of, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting climactic. Distance from major support. On this daily chart, major support is way the heck down here. And we could, you know, define why that's major support. Some of you may would like to know that, but that pivot, that turn there, as we've defined pivots, those of you that have been here many times know, we, we define a pivot low as a bar with three higher lows to the left and right. Y3, it works. It's on average. You can just a good, it's a good rule of thumb. It's worked for years. And, you know, from that, there are no more pivots along the way here, which is another um, attribute of a climactic, a pattern becoming climactic. There are no pattern, no pivots. 
And that means that it doesn't pull back more than three days. It just keeps going up. Maybe it goes down one day or two days and it keeps going up. So as that begins to advance further and further, <clears throat> and this is a visual aid that moving average price is being so far away, just an objective common sense thought is, hey, that's extended. Now, what do I do with extended? Well, we got to build on that. Right. One thing that I that I would add, and this came up in the green room yesterday where someone, I don't remember what the chart was or the stock was, but they said, hey, it's extended from the 20. It's a good pattern, like bar by bar, it was a good pattern of extended for the 20. And what I pointed out in the room was, yeah, but it just started from a consolidation meaning it's supposed to get extended. So for example, I don't know what this was here and you see this gets extended, but maybe I know it was some kind of basing pattern because the 20 and the 50 are close together here. So it had to be going sideways there for a while and it probably came out of a, a bottom. So that's supposed to get extended. And while it's still likely to pull back a bit, when it gets extended like this and it's near a whole number, odds are it's probably going to go sideways for a longer period of time or retrace. The, you know, the angle, you know, which is, you know, kind of a derivative of, of how far from the 20 MA. Uh, Greg added this um, ADX over 60, you know, if you wanting to put things into your, your scanning software, uh, wide range bar ending after, you know, these other traits, um, overly bullish sentiment is a plus. If every, if, let's just say this is Apple computer because everyone can relate. If if you have 60 buy um, recommendations on Apple and zero, zero sells and it looks like this, that's a plus to me because it's telling me you got everyone committed to the bullish side. And, you know, back to my uh, rocket ship, so when all, when the fuel, you know, we're, we're going to get into right now the next slide of of when we see the fuel, the rocket fuel ending, and and when to start uh, fading this thing. But when that ends, because of this vertical move, it it has this price avoid for it to retrace. All right. So Greg, why don't you talk about this? Because now we're now we're getting into the 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 different flavors. And you said it when we talked about the nine uh, pictures. Yeah. It could be either one of those, but we're now focusing on objective evidence of the turn. So th this slide is to reinforce, you know, what I said on that other slide. Meaning like here are all these different pictures that suggest a turn. Now, when you see something, a pattern that suggests a turn, there are certain other attributes that increase the probability that that turn will successfully continue. So in, in this slide where it's showing, hey, here's a one candle reversal, a two candle reversal, a three candle reversal. We put this in there to continually, in every MT Live, we're continually dispelling a lot of the technical analysis concepts that are a major reason why so many fail. Because you get caught up in thinking, oh, this is a shooting star or a Haramai or a dark cloud cover or a piercing pattern. I need to see that kind of thing. No. On any given day, on any particular stock in the time frame you're looking at, it could take on one of these pictures and they mean exactly the same thing because it's about, it went down and it went up. It went down and it went up. It went down and it went up. So, so we have a starting point with understanding that. And, and we're going to be showing you here, and this is the start of it, that we have different levels of confidence on the term with these different patterns, number of bars, we're gonna get into a, um, you know, the, this W retest, having the highest probability of a reversal after a climactic buy setup, but we're, we're giving you the, the building blocks here. So, you know, let's take a look at these. These are all climactic buy setups. Let's apply what we've learned already. So th this one's in a downtrend. 
climactic buy set up. Fear, 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 fear. And this was actually what we call a bear sandwich breakdown. That is a beautiful high probability short right there, just as an aside. And this turned out to be a home run, simple management of the short. But that's not today's subject. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's talk about the turn right now. So we, we, we just started this introduction, right? How many bars do I have to give me confidence that I'm, I'm ready to bounce? The selling has eased. Well, is it this bar? No, there's no reversal. Is it this bottoming tail bar? No, that's a bearish inside bar. Okay, this bottoming tail made a new low in close green, is it now? No, that's still, I don't have the confidence. Now, this green bar, I have a four bar turn. You see that everyone? So that is, is a, you know, and, and I could have gotten in over this bar, but it, we only have an hour together. We can't teach you the whole course. Um, but now I have the confidence that that's a short term low. What about this one? You know, came down sloppier than this one. This one, we, we want them far from the 20 MA like because the rubber band and they snap back more. But this is a beautiful 180 reversal. This one, I wouldn't touch. It, it started with a gap. It's not a potent turn. It worked, but the quality of this one is, is horrible. Okay, Greg, what about this one? We've, we've, we've talked a lot already about setup. Is this a climactic buy setup based on our definition? 100% yes. Which one are you pointing to? Then I don't see your red this, thing anymore. This, yeah, because it's, they changed it. Like, <laughs> no, but it's good. Just hit your attributes and a little thing pops up. It helps everybody see what you're pointing at. Okay, but that's going to mess something else up. Shouldn't. You go to view options and hit attributes and it'll open up that thing there. You mean annotate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got it to get there. It depends on how it's, but yeah. Yeah, it's a new task bar, which. Yeah, it's been there for a while. You just got to get used to it. I don't like it either, but. It's in the middle there. I don't get it since you're the one in control of the point PowerPoint. The color? No, up above it. It looks now. like a little gear or something. That's just drawing. Spotlight. Yes, that's it. There uh, you go. There you go. Right, but I'm going to have trouble. But let's keep going. All no, right, so, you won't have trouble advancing. That doesn't stop you from advancing. Okay. All right. So is this is this a climactic buy setup? Yes. Many fluid bars far from the 20, 20 far from the 50, far from major resistance. When do I hit the buy button? We just discussed it. When you get one of these. <laughs> Here. When I, when I have a confident turn, I have zero turn yet. I don't even have a one bar turn. Volumes of plus, meaning this is getting dumped. So I am looking for some picture of turn. I'll tell you when I see it. And note, notice, go back to that for a second, Dan. So one of the attributes is that for it, it goes vertical. That, that's a heads up that it's getting climactic. So it, it has to get extended from the 20 if it goes vertical, but bar by, see how these bars, they overlap each other a bit. That means there's some hope. This means there's no hope. That you are just, if you're, if you're long that, you are ready to vomit. And that is what happens on a climactic pattern. People are dumping it. They don't care. They are so confident it's going lower. At that point, you're getting ready. And so when you get one of these pictures, it's a strong indication that it's going to make a turn. 
And if you were short this and it's going down like that, and say you saw that bottoming tail bar, the breakdown failure of that 180, wouldn't you think maybe you should take your money? And so that's what others are starting to think. All right. I mean, we, you know, Craig, for a 22 minute seminar, we could actually end right there. We've, we've given so much information already. And, and now we was, should shut our mouths, maybe. And that was a, that was a great um, slide with four of them. Mm -hmm. All right. So is this a climactic buy setup? Yep. Far from the 20. Now I have a two bar reversal. So would I have enough confidence to buy over the high of this green bar? In this example, yes, because I have a bottoming tail range expansion closing deep into that and look to the left. The reversal's happening on major support in the 200. So see, we always, the slide we started with, we always have to overlay our other concepts. Yes, that's the key. And, and, and also I circled here the volume. Look at the volume on this range expansion bottoming tail bar. That's a plus. Same but different. Greg, you mentioned when you were talking about the nine pictures of a breakdown failure. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked like it was going to go lower. You know, I'm looking at this and saying, oh, it's extended. There's a couple of bottoming tail bars. And this is where there, there's this balance of, hey, the trend is down. I think it's going lower. I see a bottoming tail bar that makes you want to cover. And maybe it's going to retrace a little bit. But how much will it retrace? How much of the profit will you give up if you don't cover in a situation like that? Well, I can't answer that because that's the unknown. However, in this slide, what you're looking at is you see these bottoming tail bars. But as the arrow is pointing out, it's in an area of major support. So it's like, all right, I see the bottoming tail bars. Maybe I'll cover half. And then you get the red bar. And it's like, it produces a thought. Oh, maybe it'll keep going down, even though it's at support. Now what? And then it flips back up. It takes out the high of the red bar. It's time to take your money. Or be willing to sit through something like this. And most of us are not going to do that. So you got to at least incrementally take some money off the table. All right, we could, you know, same but different, same but different. This is a a, a a spy bar turn with my price void. So now that this closing green bar was a closing breakout, now I'm ready to buy over that bar's high, stop under the low, price void, trail, next trade. So what, what I'm going to show you on this one is many times we call this, you know, drilling down. Uh, this is not a what we call a potent reversal. Remember, I don't know if I've used that term, but I, I said, how confident are you on the turn? I'm not confident on this turn. But, and, and you know, Greg loves his hourly, talks about it a lot in, in the green room that when we're trading climos, so you can write this down. I don't, I didn't write it anywhere, but a good rule of thumb is go down one smaller time frame and make sure it breaks that downtrend. So here's my hourly chart, nasty, nasty selling, right? Which is this collapse. I finally have a deeper tracement and higher low. So this green bar at least broke the back of, of that hourly. So for day trading, once it broke the back of the hourly downtrend, look at my 15 minute entry. Okay, I got a nice 180 reversal. This would have been my entry 
stop prior days, you know, depends if you're day trading or swing. But this this is a process of using multiple time frames to try to get on board earlier when you're anticipating this reversal. Yeah, I can give you a, a general, like I the hourly chart, why I mention it all the time. First of all, climactic patterns, they're very emotional. And well, you know, this is going down as much as it is. And if people are short, it tends to be like stretching a rubber band and it snaps back. So, so one of the things to look for is a, a range expansion kind of a bar. That That's really helpful. If they're narrow range bars like they are here, you don't have that kind of climactic bar along with the climactic pattern, you know, which could be like a bottoming tail bar where it broke down and come back. But if you get another narrow range bar, right, you still don't have one of those big range expansion bars. However, if you should get so lucky right, to get that kind of a bar that it hasn't snapped back yet, the hourly chart builds a base. This is a, a key concept with multiple time frame alignment is that well, you you know, you could trade that from the daily chart, but you're it's a counter trend trade. And sometimes things go down more than you would have thought is reasonable. Anyway, if you could get a third day, this now builds a nice base in here. And not only can is it good for a climactic kind of a pattern, it's great for day trades. Because now I could go down and you know, if I get a, a an hourly that looks this way, five minute chart, day trades, um, you get an extra day there. You know, now you can get into thinking credit spreads. But anyway, the more time frames you have in alignment with each other, the greater the probability that things will move in a fluid manner. All right, so now climactic cell setup. This is a great example. Go back to that slide where I gave you all the objective criteria. You're on, you're, you know, I got get this little guy. I'm watching you. I don't, there's sometimes I watch things for three weeks, um, but the, then we nail the entry. So I, the, you, you're on my list. You're a rocket ship far from the 20, huge volume. Now you're gapping up. Well, I'm going to put you on my interest list. I'm going to put you on a five minute chart and notice that it gapped up and it did rip up. Deep retracement, lower high, breakdown, sell setup, breakdown. So another great intraday entry, not only for day trading, but for you know entering your, your bearer stock or option trade as a swing trade. So here's a similar one where I'm showing you the options. So SMCI has been on a tear. You know, this is a, a competitor of NVIDIA and with the AI craze, uh, it actually went up to 1200. And then the the call, the, the option prices just skyrocket like they are now with Trump's new company, um, with this Reddit new company, uh, with the MSTR Bitcoin company. So this is a climactic sell setup, right? Yeah. Just like the emoji on the last slide, I'm watching you. I'm watching you every day. Now it gapped up. Range expansion sell-off. So this is an option trade where um, we, we sold naked calls. We're using our technical approach to say, I don't think this stock is gonna go up there in X number of days. This was the option quote screen. We had seven days to expiration, made a nasty reversal at, at a thousand bucks. So we went, we went the furthest out that we could, which at the time was 1500 strike. And we sold these things, whatever we got filled at 875. And you know, one contract is the minimum. And so $875 comes into your account that's yours to keep through, through time decay. And this stock can rally $500 and you still keep your money by expiration. So that's one of the beautiful things of, of selling options is 
it can go against you and you make money through the time decay. So this was the market close the same day we sold this. Same day. We just, I think we did closed half or, or full, I, I don't remember. But we sold them for eight seventy five. We bought them back at a buck thirty five. Um, so do the math. You made you know six hundred eight seven hundred and fifty bucks by just gap and crap. Uh, here here is another one. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Look at this straight down volume on this prior day is the biggest volume in months. Greg, that, what's the analogy we use? It, it's it's traders hitting their puke point. Exactly. I know. Right. They're 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 hang, they're sitting in this. They're 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 praying to the porcelain god. Please come back. I can't take the pain anymore. Uh, I'll, come on, right here. I'll 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 never trade again if you get me my money back. And then you're like, I I can't sleep anymore, and you sell at the low. And yeah. let me answer Deepak's question. Sure. See Sam, Sam is trying to help him there. So the idea of a specific number, three or five, you're looking for the holy grail. <laughs> and so now when you start talking about different time frames, there's no right or wrong time frame. It's a choice. Are you a scalper using a one minute chart? Are you an intraday kind of a swing trader using a five or 15 minute time frame, and so on. You said nine minute. Why would anybody use a nine minute? I have no idea, but that's kind of along the lines of, hey, you know, some special time frame. you got an edge. No. When you, when you ask about a factor of three, forget that. Bring just some basic, simple common sense to what you're thinking. So, what we're talking about today is climactic patterns. It got extended. It's likely to bounce, all right? Now, if it starts to bounce, do you think those that went long this are going to be anxious to take their money pretty quick since the trend is down, you know, with a lot of power and there's a lot of people up above that are holding losses? How far might this go before sellers show up? I can't tell you specifically, but those that are scalping, say from a one minute chart or a two minute chart or whatever, you know, they're going to be inclined to look to take their money relatively quickly. Now, if this pattern down here had three bars, would it build a larger area of support? where more traders would have accumulated and possibly helped drive it higher because the fear created by this pattern, that extreme kind of dissipates a little bit. Whereas I think we're going to have a couple of retest patterns to look at, right, Dan? Like a W, yep. if something went like this and came back up again, and now you had a bottom with six bars or seven bars or whatever, it doesn't matter. You just got a longer bottoming process where you're moving away from this very emotional pattern. This is the process of head and shoulders bottoms and rounding bottoms or whatever. I don't want to get too deep into it, but you got to get away from the crazy thinking that's out there. <laughs> so that, so I'm selling these options and spreads. This is one of our subscribers who loves this strategy. And, and we love when people say this, I made money and the stock went against me. Now, if you didn't know anything about options, you would say, oh, you're a snake oil salesman. But we sell these expensive options around compelling patterns. And as the stock moves in, in the intended direction, and because options lose value day by day, even if the stock goes nowhere or against you a little bit, we can still make money when we close the the spread out in that in this particular time uh, you know we're three week total 54 for 56 um and that's this particular letter we have three advisory letters this is our weekly options trader it only sells options and spreads that expire 10 days or less 
Um, and I just gave you a couple examples there. Uh, Matt, you can go to mastertrader.com forward slash weekly options and read all about it. Email us with questions. And then we have Greg just posted when annual 30, you get 30% off of the, the monthly. So it's a great annual, Dan, not annual. the monthly. 30% it's 30% off, off the monthly buying annual. Right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. For the, um, Let me just add, add to that before you move on. Sure. Many, we don't offer annual subscriptions to the weekly options trader. It's not on the website. So those of you that are on the monthly, if you want to make a savings and get out of the month to month billing, if you use that link, it'll automatically cancel your monthly subscription and flip you over to the annual and you will hold that savings as long as you're on there. Uh, absolutely, go for you, 100%. Oh, oh, if you're saying, oh, I have a buy setup on the daily and a buy setup on the weekly, yes, but it's not required. We, we just want the bias of multiple timeframes to be in agreement with the time frame you're trading. All right, so I'm going to keep this real simple for what we're talking about today. Uh, I have a momentum move down, a climactic buy setup. We've spent the first half hour talking about getting on board the first turn. Okay. We've shown you a bunch of examples. Now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to have some flavor of retest. So isn't it common sense that that's going to have higher odds of success? Here's my climactic buy setup. In the retests are going to come in different flavors. And the bar by bar analysis is going to tell you which bar I'm entering. So on this particular retest, am I confident on this red bar? Well, I would be over the high of the red bar, but now the next bar, am I confident now? No. What about the next bar when it gapped up and then took out the red bar's high? Yes. What I'm, what I'm drawing there is that there's no range expansion bar. There's no gap reversal. There's no breakdown failure. It's just a slowing in momentum. Yep. So when that, you know, there wasn't any, there was fear based on this, that climactic move lower, but at the end of the move, it wasn't really like it just puked out, you know, with that kind of shakeout fear, gap reversal, bottoming tail bar. It's great when it happens. It, it, it adds to the probability that it's going to retrace. So yeah. having this retest with not having a great turn there makes it a really nice setup. Yep. Excellent point. We would not, based on what you've learned today, we would not have traded this, even though it gave you a three-day bounce. Didn't meet our setup, so we don't trade it. Here, intraday chart, down 13%, so obviously it was in some ugly news. Bottoming tail, could I have traded that as a climate, as a day trade? Yeah, because I have two bottoming tails and 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 it traded over the high. But now I have a three bar turn retest, much higher odds. You know, Greg uses the term same but different. So the whole the rest of these slides, we have another five minutes or so before we um, switch over to real charts. You're gonna see it's the same but different. Monthly chart, momentum moved down went up. Is this a climo that we would trade? No. What about my retest broke out higher low range expansion? Yes. Now I have a very confident retest pattern from a bottoming pattern with a price void. Yes. This is our, our live trading room. You can check us out, mastertrader.com forward slash green trial. Spend a week with us, folks. We, we give you power pack education here. We have for five and a half years in, in this um, MT Live. Uh, but come come in, in, in the live market with us and watch us trade and apply this knowledge in real time. Seven bucks for an entire week. 
same but different. This, this, this is this a climactic buy setup the way we've been showing you with the fluid move bars down? No, it's a mess, and it bounced. But I, but I have a retest here. This was jets. This is when we gave it. Uh, we have three advisory letters, and we. This is where we gave it on this gap up day, um, uh, to our ETF subscribers. Is this a tradable climo the way we've talked about today? Yes, but I wouldn't do it unless it took out this red bar, which it did. But now I have a retest of major support with a big boy. Same but different. Same but different. Climactic buy setup. Same but different. So would I trust buying over the high of this green bar? Greg will have his own answer, but I'll tell you my answer. Yes, it's down a lot. Range expansion, slightly higher low, and a price void. So in, yeah, so in this particular case, we didn't buy the stock, although you could have. We sold one of these put spreads that I already showed you a couple of examples of. So over the high of this bar, we sold an out of money put spread. Um, you know, here are the numbers. So if you do a 10 lot, taking in $500 um, for a couple days expiration. Now this one, this one's, this, the daily is not a climb. I'm not showing you that. The weekly is a climb with a four bar turn. Go back to that earlier slide. But I'm using my daily charts for my entry, which was a breakdown failure breakout. So this is a beautiful example of multiple time frame in alignment. It's drawing that little breakdown failure. That's great. That's this is a great little that's, setup there. That's that's our tell. Yeah. But but to be clear, Greg, that breakdown is not where we're entering. Of it, course. Right, it's 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 it, it, Greg is doing it. He's just not saying it. So you see this square. So this breakdown failure is our bottoming tail, right. but we're buying the breakout. Okay. Uh, same but different. So Greg, this this was yours. I remember Abbott. Uh, why don't you tell them the psychology of when this was coming down? What what you were telling subscribers? Well, we talked about it in the green room, and then you know, then it resulted in this trade. Right. And so, when, when I saw the climactic pattern, and I saw this, and this was coming down, and I and I said to you there, I said, let's watch this for a retest and reversal. Exactly. And it set up. So it was just it took a couple of days to happen, mm -hmm. but you know, we were patient and waited, and it set up. Right. So on this last green bar here. We said, look, I got two inside bars within this green one, and it's not making a new low. And we bought call options, and we got the benefit of, of that gap up. We sold half, 64% return on capital in one day. So th this one was not in the weekly options trader. This was in the advisory, swing, an advisory letter which does things a little further out. Some, it does debit spreads. It does puts, calls, directional trades. A little bit different, much more constant, not uh, much more strategies with, with that letter. Yeah. Uh, so here's big old retest, red bar ignored, three bar turn. I got my confidence. Wig me, we gave this to our ETF letter. This one, you know, it's a breakdown failure. So I, I really, I'm not calling this one, um, but we've, we're focused on this. It gapped up to major resistance. So I'm watching you. Remember the little meme? I'm not doing anything. I'm watching you. And so this one, once it closed like this, we said, let's sell one of these out of the money bear call credit spreads. $10 higher. 
another anticipatory turn, just like that Abbott, same but different, same but different. Uh, here's a couple of trades from uh, these two different letters, uh, two of our three. Uh, these top three is in the advisory letter where this one, we bought call options. Uh, Myrna here, this one, we, we, we did a bull call debit spread. This one, long stock, and these are closed trades kept in the, in the members area. It gives the date, the symbol, the strategy, uh, the technical setup, uh, the management in between. And that's, that's what you get when you take Greg's course. So you understand the technicals. Uh, these, these were two um, credit spreads in our weekly options trader, bear call credit spread on UNH, a bull put credit spread on NVIDIA, you know, because both these were open two days, had, had an 8%, 6% return on capital. Uh, so th this is Greg's swing trading course, whether you're new to trading or been trading 20 years, he has it put together in these thought building modules. Go back to the first slide, which is showing you, you know, that was an abbreviated slide, of course, but all the concepts, which is our technical systematic approach to trading. And it's just an incredible seminar on, on teaching you how to objectively read price patterns, um, bar analysis, trade management, um, trader psychology, and Greg just gave you a, a, a separate uh, bonus there in, in that link. Well, that is not for the swing uh, course. However, right. many have asked for us to uh, offer again the two for one special for the advisory letter. <clears throat> and it comes with those two uh, mini courses on one, two, three patterns and flag patterns. But if you wanna add the swing course, at that checkout, it's 30% off. All right, awesome. Let's take a look at um, the markets here. We can answer any questions you all like. <clears throat> Fred, show them ACN. Um, we, we, that was a climo. Um, and, you know, I, we weren't confident of the turn for a directional, but we, gave a put spread idea on ACN. All right. I just got an alert on, on this one based on, on the daily chart. That's a nice daily uh, I like. Well that's a weekly. Oh. This is this is the daily. It's been consolidating at, at resistance, but you can see the W down here. Sure. You know, where it, it, not a nice clean one, but you know it because it gapped up. But See this nice rounding kind of a bottom here and this breakdown and reversal. This is a nice kind of a pattern suggesting it's going to go higher. It'd be great for credit spreads if it ha if it had a premium, but I don't know that it does or not. But, you know, we're kind of getting a, again, it's got some resistance here, but let's we look at other stuff. Um, JR wants to look at GRWG, yes, weekly Mar time frame. Marijuana. So, wow. It's had a monster move. It's a marijuana stock in specialty yeah. retail. I guess so, huh? It's special when you're yeah. selling marijuana. Yeah, especially. Yeah, it is. But here, it this isn't a climactic, but it is a retest type of a pattern. Look at the, the weekly reversal here. You know, here it got climactic. It was just really wild, you know, so fast. Like if you blink, you missed it. But this definitely is making a turn here now with this wide range bar on, on the weekly time frame. I mean, it's Wednesday. we got tomorrow and it'll be closed, but uh, marijuana is making turns. So this is in our ETF letter. Um, you know, nice explosive move off of that. Um, ACN. ACN, Accenture, climactic, bottoming tail bar. Maybe this will get a retest yeah. uh, down here. See, it's on those pivots there on, on the left, on the daily time frame in the 200 MA. Um, SPX on the hourly. Look at the SPX. 
So markets are trying to bottom out here. You can see uh, the Russell has been the strongest today. Right out of the gate, it was the strongest. You know, see the little breakdown failure, but um, the hourly chart, SPX would be the same on here. I don't know. You know, uh, Godfrey had this nasty break yesterday. We had the gap up this morning. It's pulling back like it's going to turn higher. We got this big news day tomorrow. So I don't know how much it'll it, it'll move, but it, it certainly looks like it's going to try and go higher. The hourly chart has, uh, well, it's got quite a bit of time left in it. So you got to make sure that these bars are done. You know, got this little hook. So it looks like you can go up and, and do a retest. You know, it's not part of what we're talking about here, but that certainly looks like it could go up to the high of the day since it didn't fill the gap. That's a positive. You know, we talk about this kind of stuff in the green room all day or trade. We trade these setups either with leveraged ETFs or futures contracts. Uh, if I was to see like this turn out to be a red bar ignored and flip back up again, I'd be willing to go along the queues here. I will check that out when we get back into the green room. Uh, climactics. Ah. Uh, Anactics. XBI has a W bottom if it closes strong. XBI, yeah, that was strong today. It's not, it's not a climactic pattern, but it's a retest. Right. right? We talked about this in the room yesterday. Right. I was making the turn. Uh, Amgen. This was a uh, little turn action there. I made a little video on that the other day. Um, that's moving up nicely. Here's the, on top of support there. Uh, let me see here. That's not that one. Here. We can check that out on, uh, and subscribe to the channel. You can see two little short videos, about a minute there. One is on Amgen and one is on uh, Merck. Arc, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what else is moving here. Oh, I got it. Movers active here. <laughs> wow, look at that weekly bar. So th this is one that will stay on the interest list for <laughs> swings and That's certainly right. for, for day trades. Um, you know, it's just kind of going nowhere today, not doing much of anything. And then it's R, D, D, T. Um, you know, you got a five minute climactic. There's a retest. So that's something I think I'll be looking for to see if it'll retrace back up this afternoon as, as a day trade. Uh, you know, the daily is, you know, a red bar. So it's not, it's probably, it's not, I, well, I doubt it become a bottoming tail bar today, but you know, it's a new Momo stock or Mimi stock as they call them. So yeah. they could come in and, and rip it higher. Uh, what else? Marvell, right? I uh, had this retest and wind up gapping up today, but you can see it's on, on support. That's a nice, you know, kind of call it kind of like a semi climactic, Dan. I mean, this is climactic, but it just started to move down. These kind of patterns rarely get all the way back up to the high, but you know, crazy stuff's happening, you know, in, in this market lately. Uh, Boeing, you know. That's not really climactic. You know, tried to bottom out there. Well, here it was climactic. Uh, UPS, that's terrible. Thank goodness. Maybe the the hourly is climactic. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we could get a retest, you know, with a pattern like this, we yeah. can do that as a day trade. Same concept, just changing time frames. You know, just multiple bars down. It's on this support here. We can get a retest. Um, you know, uh, Tesla. That's not climactic. This is just an active list. These are these are trading actively today. Uh, here, AMD, not climactic, but a retest. It's been trying to go up. Um, 
you know, it's been on the interest list for a few days. Everything. Do you find that by waiting for retest, some trades will be missed? Of course. Yeah, of course. Look, you know, this, this, this is one of the psychological things that you deal with as a trader. You create a method. You create your trading plan. And you know that these are high probability setups. The market's not giving you the, those setups today. So maybe you just start searching all over the place, try, trying to find your setup. You don't find it. Oh, I got to press the button. I got to do something here. I got to make some money. And so you deviate from your plan. And, and, and that is not a good thing. So that's the, you know, having the patience and discipline for your, your setup to come to you sometimes is easier said than done. Uh, so you know, other times you just have, you have to wait and it depends on the time frame that you're trading. And it is the reality of what we do. And so many of us, <laughs> no one's immune to it. You know, we get into some bad trades. We do things that we know we shouldn't do, but we do it anyway. And uh, sometimes we get lucky and that reinforces bad habits. So look, yeah, you're going to miss trades. No way but Greg, but Greg, I think we've done a great job um, showing the difference today. And that's what I just typed out. If we're confident of the original turn, then of course we're going to trade that. And if yeah. we're not confident, we say, no, I'm going to wait for a retest. If, if not, if it doesn't retest, then I definitely miss it. Yeah. So there's this, you know, idea of fear of missing out. And that is something you have to just fight, you know, or deal with. So it's a reality of trading and, and, you know, making mistakes and pressing the button. And sometimes you get lucky and other times, you know, it's like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I won't do it again, but you'll do it again. And so it's just part of what comes with learning to stick to your plan. And another thing that, you know, this is not a psychology kind of thing, but the psychology related to this in that, um, and the money management part. And so as trading, as we're trading, you can make the money you want to make in a few hours or two days. And then you're sitting in front of the, the, the monitor for another three days waiting. And it's like, what did I do for three days? <laughs> Nothing. But that's, you know, maybe you have a different strategy. So in the green room, there are directional trades. There's option trades. So you get different vehicles to make money. Now, if you don't do option trades, you don't. Others, are, you got people in the room that are doing different option trades, debit spreads, credit spreads, puts and calls and buying and, and selling or shorting. So it's a great educational community to come in and watch what other people are doing and ask questions. So I encourage you to take a $7 trial to the green room if you're available throughout the day. And since there's so many of you here, you are. So come on in there and ask questions and learn a few things. And uh, we'll be back next week. We'll talk then. Good trade, Bye. everyone. Thank you for listening to Master Trader Live. If you liked the show, we invite you to share this video on your timeline or tag a friend who wants to learn stock market tips. Stay educated with our free chart of the week, a weekly analysis or lesson sent right to your inbox. We're live every week. And you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell to get alerts. If you've enjoyed the event, please give us a thumbs up. Just visit mastertrader.com. That's mastertrader.com.